how did you escape? And it actually is one of the questions that I wanted to know as well. I didn't ask that during the interview. You touched on it where you said that it took, it was like a three to five year process that it took right. to get to that point. And so that was the one thing, like, how did you eventually escape? And when we say escape, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about being basically under the authority and, and direction of her father, maybe within the same household before mm -hmm. being able to, to get out of the situation. Well, uh, yeah, it was long. There was what got the ball rolling was one morning my son woke up. I just had my youngest, my first son for my dad. Um, he was five months old and he woke up with seizures. And my father was out of town at the time and my brother was visiting, you know, my mom was still in the house and um, we didn't know what was happening. We didn't know it was seizures. In my mind, he was dying and coming back to life. So my brother convinced my mom to let him take me and the baby to the, to the doctor. Now, when we got to the doctor and we ended up in the emergency room, I filled out on the registration application that my father was my children's father. So we had the same name. So that raised the red flag. Mm. Um, my father got on the first plane back, came, threatened to take my son out of the hospital against medical advice. And then that just pushed it up even higher and local authorities were, um, were notified that he was trying to take the baby out and he would turn out he had rickets it turned out he had he was deficient in vitamin d and vitamin c um and he had rosary so he had all of these deficiencies because why after i had him i wasn't really allowed to go outside he wasn't allowed to go outside my breast milk was deficient and um it turned out he had these problems and that's what actually caused the seizures so that's when my children were taken away. Now then, there was just a whole process of trying to figure out and trying to strategize because my dad threatened that if I was to say anything to social services when they interviewed me, and they interviewed him as well, mm -hmm. but if I was to say anything, then he would kill my children that he still had, and he would also kill my sisters. So I had this, there was this like rock in a hard place, literally. Yeah. And then on top of it, the worker was racist. And she immediately yeah. came in and threatened to take my kids away without even explaining or there was no sign of her trying to help me. And in my mind, this was exactly, she was what my father had taught me that the outside world was you know they only wanted to harm us especially if we were black because we lived in an all-white community in south jersey um so just over time and my kids ended up in foster care and it was just trying to figure out well how do i continue to keep my siblings safe my father found out where my children were in foster care. He tried to kidnap them through the process. Mm -hmm. um, there, it was just a lot of stuff. I got pregnant again. He raped me. He beat me. I got pregnant again. He took me to Florida to deliver my, my daughter on the beach so that I was not around anybody that could possibly help. But um, see, this is a long story. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's it. <laughs> no, it's it's great. It's great. Yeah. Um. And and you know, I I'm, I'm just giving you an overview, and then through me learning the system, learning what my rights were, learning what domestic violence was and pedophilia, in the attempt in trying to get my children back, um, I eventually became more secure in myself and I started to develop a faith in those that were outside of our family that could possibly help so one day I ended up telling someone that my father really respected and he actually worked for, I still don't even know what department in New York he works for, but he worked for some form of government agency mm -hmm. and was able to 
provide shelter for my siblings and my mom, change the locks, and take my mother to report my father for domestic violence. And but just before that, I had already stood up to my father. He was about to sexually abuse my sister, who was actually pregnant for him. And um, he, I, I just, I just, I don't even want to call it snap because snap to me makes you feel like you're crazy. But I yeah. think I came to a realization. I had a breakthrough at that moment because I'm looking at this situation, now having all of this new knowledge and this confidence that I built in, up in myself from the knowledge that I had gained. And I'm like, I'm going to parenting classes and, you know, I'm, I'm just learning the world. And I'm like, this asshole has been lying the whole time. Yeah. So, yeah. and then I looked at my mother and I'm like, you're just been letting him do this the whole time. And then that's, I went off. I went off on him. I didn't care about what he, what the repercussions was going to be. And honestly, he was in shock. The last time I had fought back against him, I, I might have been like 14 or 15, just before I got pregnant. And for me to, I think, stand up to him in that moment, it really just surprised him. And he did nothing. He just sat down and didn't say anything. Um, and then after that, he did not try. Well, and then that's when my mom was taken to report him for domestic violence and things started from there. And then that's when me and my sisters talked about reporting him and, you know, realizing that he was still out there, but uh, more time had passed because we was ready to just live our lives. We were just ready. Like we are away from him. He seems to be afraid because now we have achieved some form of self-actualization and, um, he stayed away. He kept his distance. Wow. And then after many conversations, we was like, hold up. He's still having kids. He's still out here as a pedophile, possibly molesting other children. And then that's when we got together and decided to report him. All in gotcha. the midst of me getting my kids back. And yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's no, lot. thank you for touching on that. I know in the, in the interview, as, as you guys who are joining in, it's, I'm Jay Nicole to Grief Fully. We're chatting with Aziza Kibibi. She was on 100, episode 100 of the Grief Fully podcast. We talked for about an hour about her story, and that's on youtube.com slash Jay Nicole to Grief Fully. I saw some people in the comments asking about your book. You can go to Aziza Kibibi. I put it in the comments.com mm -hmm. as well as Amazon. It's called Unashamed, A Life Tainted. So you definitely, and if you're from Aziza's page, you can follow me on Instagram. And if you're from my page, you can follow Aziza as well. We're both doing amazing work in, in our community. So mm -hmm. that story I is really enlightening because I got to say, there was a comment on TikTok, but there was someone on there. And out of all of the comments, there was only one that was negative. And I know you get negative feedback often, but... Mm -hmm. It was saying that, like, oh, yeah, like, she was, when she was 15, she could have left, like, you know, after the first kid yeah. and all that. And so I think people fail to realize that this started when you were eight. So the outside world didn't really exist beyond what your father told you. Right. So it just, anyway, so I'm glad that you were able to explain that.